The concept we're going to be covering in this video is how to create a chrome type mask. It's very simple. You basically just create some uh, vectors in Illustrator and then import them into Blender and extrude it. So in Adobe Illustrator, I'm just going to be using the pen tool and the shape tool and the paintbrush tool to create some sort of abstract tribal shapes and then compile them into a shape of a mask that we're going to put onto our character. You can search and get some inspiration on Pinterest and Instagram with these hashtags that are above me right now. We're going to start by opening up Blender and importing all the files that you downloaded from the link to the Gumroad below or from the files that you created yourself. I'm going to start by importing the object of just the bust of a head. As you can see, that's all that is. You can import any face you want or any sort of thing you want to put this on. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. And we're going to import the SVG of the mask that we created. As you can see when you import it, it imports it all down here. On the right side is a bunch of curves. So we're going to size this up about nine times. And we're going to rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees. We're going to isolate it so you can see that everything imported nicely. I'm going to go up here, Object, Convert, Mesh. Now that we have all the curves converted to mesh, we're going to hit Control J to join them to be one mesh. Now down here, we're going to go over to the modifiers. We're going to add a solidify. And we're just going to turn it up just a little bit to like 0 0.15. And then we're going to make sure that we have Shade Smooth on just to see how it looks. As you can see, this doesn't really look that good in a shade smooth. And the reason is because the topology on this is not good at all. So now that we have it sort of solidified like this, we're gonna apply the solidify and we're gonna use a nifty little modifier called remesh. Open up remesh. As you can see, everything disappears. We're gonna go over here into the voxel size. And we're gonna put a zero before the one. Looks a little bit more like the shape, and then we're just going to go down here and keep dividing this by two until we get it looking like we want. Keep in mind, the farther you divide it, the more it's going to be using your uh, PC because it's making more polygons for your computer to render. So just subdivide it as much as you want to make it look as good as you want. So now it's pretty much looking similar to what it was before. So we're just going to make sure we go over here and we apply this. Now, if we select Shade Smooth, you can see it still looks a little weird, but not nearly as bad as before. I'm going to go right click on this and set Origin Geometry. Now that we have this origin set to this geometry right here, we're going to go into the Sculpting, hit Slash on the Nums Pad to isolate it. And then up here where you can do Mirroring, we're going to mirror it on the Z axis so it does the front and the back at the same time. And we're also going to mirror it on the x-axis so it does both sides at the same time. So now we have the mirroring selected. Having any brush you want, if you hold down shift and go about it, it'll smooth. And because we have mirroring on, it's automatically smoothing both sides exactly the same, front and back. This will save you a lot of time. So now the step that we're going to do is we're going to go through while holding shift and go around every single edge and sculpt them all down. I'm going to fast forward this part because it takes a while. So just go through on your model that you imported or created or this one, hold down shift and smooth all the edges. All right, as you see, it's all nice and smooth now. Because we have the symmetry on it, we only had to do one quarter of it, and it did all of it for us on both sides. So we're gonna switch back to layout mode, and we're gonna just right click on the, on the gray space in our world, 
and we're gonna snap the cursor to the world origin. And we're gonna click back on our thing that we just sculpted, right click, set origin, set origin to 3D cursor, and that'll reset the origin down here. Now that we have that done, we're gonna hit Shift A, and we're gonna import a circle. Go hit seven on the mems pad to go vertical, and just size this up a little bit for now. And then we're gonna click back onto the mask, go to the modifier, add the curve, add the curve object as the circle we just imported. Now the very important thing about this is both the origins of the circle and the mask have to be the same place. That's why I put it back in the center. It can be anywhere, but as long as they're both in the same place it works, because otherwise if they're not, for example, if the mask is like over here and then we do this, you can see it doesn't really line up with the circle that perfect. So we're just going to undo that. Now that we have it lined up with the circle, we're going to hit slash to show everything again and then go back to vertical mode. And we're going to select both the mask and the circle, rotate it on the z-axis so that it's lined up in the center, and then move it back on the y-axis so it's lined up with the eyes. We're gonna hit one to go right into the front and then slash again to isolate it. Slash is a very important shortcut to remember. I use it all the time in any project I'm doing. It just makes it a lot easier when you have a lot of stuff going on. So now that we have it isolated, make sure to select the mask and the circle. Hit one to go into orthographic mode. We're gonna rotate it on the Z axis just so it is actually perfectly centered. Now that we have it nice and centered, hit slash to hide it again, and then move it up so it lines up how you want. And now if we go in the camera that I have set up, if you don't have a camera set up, you can hit shift A, add a camera, and then just position it how you want. You can see this is starting to line up pretty nicely with how we're looking to get. If we switch into rendered view, this is in cycles, and we just turn off the lighting right now just to see what it would look like. And see it's looking pretty nice. And this is with no materials and everything. So now that we got this imported, I'm gonna go through the basics of doing materials in this next part. Now that we have the human and the mask imported, we're gonna do composition and the final rendering and materials. Start by clicking on the mask and duplicating it. And then once we have the mask collected we just duplicated, we're gonna click Object, Relation, Make Single User, Object Data Material. And we're gonna go down here into the modifiers on the one and make it apply the curve so that it is now able to be moved around without being distorted like this one is. Now that we have this one selected, we're gonna rotate it on the Y axis 180 degrees and just move it up so that we have sort of a vertical mask as well. And then we're gonna go to the side view. We're gonna right click on this new one and then set the origin to the geometry. Just rotate it like this, just to give it a little bit more depth. And we're just gonna move it back on the Y axis to smidgen. Then we're gonna add a new mesh and we're gonna add an icosphere with four subdivisions so it's smooth. Right click and shade smooth. We're gonna move this up and just give it a third, sort of third eye circle right there. And then we're gonna duplicate this. Gonna array it. Let's set it to like 1.5. Let's give them seven and size this down a decent bit. Let's change it instead of 1.5, let's put it like four. And then we're just gonna move this around just to give some sort of accents. Hit three so we can see on the side to see how far away it is. And then we're gonna add a mirror on this. And we're gonna go down here and add an empty. And on this first accent one right here, on the mirror we just added, we're gonna set the mirror object to the empty. And then we're gonna duplicate this a couple times, and move it around, just to give our image a little bit more depth and a little bit more interesting like lighting to it. Size it around. Got to go like that. And then 
if we go into shading, you'll see right now we can't see anything. That's because there's no lighting in anything. Um, if you still have the materials on your person, just go in here and delete all of them. I already did that on mine. Uh, we will first start by just adding a light. We're just going to add a point light, move it up, and then just move it forward. We're just going to turn it up to a thousand just to give us a little bit of lighting in the beginning, a little bit of nice shadowing. And we're going to add another light. We're going to add an area. I'm going to size it up five, hit seven to go vertical, and we're just going to move it over two squares away. And we're just going to duplicate it so that we have this one over here also two squares away. Select both of these. We're just going to rotate this. Go vertical again. We're just going to rotate them in so that we get a little bit of side lighting. Select both the lights and just move them down. Set these at 1000 real quick just to see how light it is. It might be a little too much. Let's do 500. We're going to select the mask, add a new material. We're going to set the metallic all the way up and the roughness to 0.2. That gives us a nice metal look. You can see it's a little bit not super shiny on the edges. That's because I didn't do too much sculpting. If you want to make it super, super crisp, you got to spend a lot of time sculpting. So we're just going to grab the other one that is not materials, click on the one that has it on there, and then hit Control L to link them. And then we're going to link the materials. And that'll make both of them the same. And we're going to click on the Icosphere. We're going to add a material, and we're going to make this one be an emission. Let's just set it at like five. We're going to add a mesh. Size it up nine. Rotate it on the X 90 degrees. And just move it back so we have a background. We're going to make this one black. Turn the roughness all the way up and the metallic all the way up so it's solid black. And then we're going to grab this icosphere. Duplicate it. Just switch back to object view for a second. Hit three so we can see it from the side. And just move it so it's more into the eye. We're just gonna set this in here as though it's a pupil. And we're gonna mirror this as well. Set to the empty. And now we should have pupils in both eyes. If you look at this, it's looking pretty nice. Now we're just gonna select the human, go down to materials, Add a new material and we're just going to put subsurface scattering on it. We're just going to leave a default one on there. I like what it does to the eyes, how you can still see that. And then we're just going to click on the eyes, go to object, make it a single user in the material. And then we're just going to turn this up just so the eyes glow a little bit more. And now this is how you do a very basic sort of chrome type mask using Illustrator using vectors and SVGs and importing them into Blender. You can do as much or as little as you want with SVGs and sculpting to make it more intense. Um, go on Instagram, search up Chrome type. You'll see this around. You'll see some really interesting and really cool pieces. I suggest you experiment and you have fun with this. Um, thank you for watching this short tutorial. I hope you learned something. If not, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Like, subscribe, and share this to anybody else that uses Blender. Thank you.